Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Kat and I am a flight attendant for a major US airline. So in today's video, we are going to be talking all about boobs, breasts, boobies, tits, chichis, melons, fun bags, I mean the whole thing specifically mine. <laughs> so basically by the time of this video, you can tell this is all about me getting a boob job. Before we dive in, I just wanna say I am no means promoting plastic surgery. Just because I'm getting a boob job doesn't mean that you need a boob job. Now, if you want a boob job, go get a boob job. If you want plastic surgery, go get plastic surgery. I don't care, it's your body, it's your choice. Just do it for yourself and nobody else. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. So basically a couple videos ago, I actually announced to y'all that I was taking a vacation leave of absence from being a flight attendant for a month because I was getting my boobs done. Now I did get a few questions like asking kind of like why I felt the need to explain myself. And the reason that I felt kind of like I needed to say something is because obviously like this is even a padded bra right here. I mean, y'all, this is really actually has padding. So I want to just show up from this with some huge old boobs and have a bunch of y'all being like, did you, did you? And me trying to act like it's some secret. It's not a secret, I don't care. But then I also kind of asked y'all and I said, if you want me to make a more in detailed video, kind of going along with my journey. And I kind of expected a lot of like backlash a little bit, just because I know that plastic surgery can be very polarizing. Either people love it or they hate it. But I was astounded. I am so here for women supporting women because I received a ton of that. So thank you in 2020 that that's kind of how like we've already started the year. But anyways, many of you were like, yes, Kat, please show us your journey. Please tell us about it, whatever. So here we go. This is going to be the first vlog that I am sitting down and doing. Okay, so the way that I'm gonna kind of organize this video is I'm gonna do it by topics, which I will read to you in just a minute, but I will also be putting timestamps down below. So if you kind of want to jump around, like if you have a certain subject that you really want to know more about, you are welcome to do that or you can watch beginning to end and that way you can get the full picture of what I'm doing and what, what's going on basically. Okay, so the first topic that I'm gonna cover is why. Now, not only am I gonna tell you why, but I'm also going to be showing you pictures of me from like, I think like about five years ago or so before I got into fitness I'm gonna be showing you pictures or videos of me currently now and what I'm working with and then kind of explain where I'm planning on going what's my vision in this okay so the second subject that I'm gonna be covering is how I chose my surgeon the third thing that I want to talk about is I've already had my first consultation and I've had my pre-surgery consultation so I'm kind of kind of explain those to you and what all happened at my surgeon and what that was like for me the next topic that I'm going to cover is the type of implants there are and which specifically I am choosing the next thing I kind of want to cover is size and what size I am choosing now obviously I have not had the surgery yet so I can still change my mind which if I do that I will let you know but I don't think I'm going to be changing my mind I think I've picked a really good size according to my wants and what my surgeon thinks. The next thing that I wanna talk about is kind of the recovery time, especially as a flight attendant, like kind of what I'm envisioning or what I'm looking for, what I think is going to happen. And last but not least, I will talk about what I am expecting moving forward. So for the surgery, for the recovery, for all that good stuff from here on out. So those are gonna be the topics. Once again, there will be timestamps. So you can kind of move around how you choose or watch the whole thing. So let's get into it. Okay, so first and foremost, why? So basically, uh, I think it was about five years ago. It was like in the midst of college. I think it was like a sophomore in college, which I'm 26 now. I was not into fitness whatsoever. I did sports in high school, but I was never like skinny. I was never, I was always a little bit thicker, but I was a little bit overweight. I was, I was thick, she was thick. But anyways, I weighed a lot more and I had boobs. I had good boobs. I think at the time I was sitting around like, I don't know, like a 32D, 34D. I really don't even remember because it was so long ago, but I was in that D range. And then fast forward to later on in that year, I did get into fitness. And when I get into something, I get, into something. I am an all or nothing kind of person. So I think I went from upwards of, I, I want to say I was like around like 155 pounds or so down to about 115 to 120. Now I am five foot for a record. So that was kind of where I was sitting at at the time. So I really got into it. Now one of the first places for me to lose weight is right here and it's the last place to come. So I pretty much lost everything I had up there. Like I'm currently sitting at around a 30 32 B and I would say it's a small B. I don't own a single bra that does not have padding in it. 
I don't own a single swimsuit that does not have padding in it. So this is kind of like the videos that I'm gonna show you of what I really look like now. I am five foot. I am weighing right now at about 125, which is usually where I sit. And I do have an athletic figure. So I do weight train, I would say four to six times in a week, depending on the week. So I do have the broad shoulders. I have the narrow hips. I have a lot of muscular weight. And what my boobs ended up doing is they lost a lot of mass, not just all around, but also a lot on the top. So they kind of have like that effect where you have like a boob and then you kind of popped it and went, Ooh. Now it's not terribly bad because I have small boobs. So you're not going to get a lot of sagging when you really don't have anything anymore. But I do want to go ahead and say like, I don't hate my small boobs. I don't even feel any type of way. I'm not insecure about it. It's not even coming from a place of I don't like my body. I do like my body and I think my boobs are fine. The point is I like the look of fake boobs. That's just kind of the look I want. That's that's what I personally like and that's what I personally want to do for myself. So it's not coming from a place of insecurity. It's not coming from anybody else's opinions. Yes, my husband does support me on the whole thing. Yes, my husband likes fake boobs, but this is coming 100% for me. I have wanted it for years, but I really kind of wanted to sit on the decision and make sure this is something I 100% absolutely wanted to do. And so that's where we are right now. I am finally doing it for myself and I'm getting exactly what I want, okay? My body, my choice. So that's pretty much the why. That's, that's it for me is I just lost a lot of mass. I like the look of fake boobs anyways, so I just finally decided to do it. It's not insecurity, it's not somebody else, it's nothing but me. Okay, so moving on to subject number two, which is how I chose my surgeon. So basically, I am in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I personally wanted to do my recovery at home. I did not want to be traveling after a major surgery that was just not something that I was into or looking for. I definitely wanted to be in the comfort of my own home. So I was looking at a lot of Dallas-Fort Worth surgeons. I saw a ton of the credentials and the before and after photos, lots of places online before ultimately choosing my surgeon. I just think he does the best work that I have seen in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Now, I don't want to announce who my surgeon is or where I'm going to quite yet. And the reason for this is I have not actually done my boob job yet. But in my last video, I did announce the day that I'm getting it done. And this is the internet. And I don't want anything weird to happen. You know what I mean? So I do not want to quite put that information out there yet. But by the time that I finish my surgery and I'm all done with it, I will gladly announce. It's no hidden secret. I want y'all to know, like, when I get the best results, that I want you to be able to get the best results as well. But just for the safety and security of myself, I'm not quite putting that out there yet. But I will tell you exactly who I'm going to later on. Okay, and really quickly, if you are enjoying this video and you do find this information helpful please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you have not already it helps support me and it helps support this channel and I really appreciate it okay so the next topic is my first two consultations so basically I did my first consultation and then yesterday I went and did my pre-surgery consultation and that one you do two weeks prior to surgery so at the first consultation I got there the staff was amazing everybody that works there is so nice so sweet, loving. It was a great experience. You go into the room and you take everything from the top up off and put on a robe. And then from there, they come and talk to you. They come and discuss like your health stuff. So basically you'll get to go over like the different types of implants. You can feel them, see them, everything really up close and they can give you lots of good information. So you can kind of pick that for yourself. You get to try the implants on so you can have a sports bra and they'll have the cutlet so you can put them in and out and kind of try on different sizes. They also usually have shirts as well. So you can put on a shirt over it's pretty hard to tell just based off of like cutlets and a bra exactly what it's gonna look like I mean you get an idea but you don't get the full picture you know what I mean but you get to try different sizes on and like at first they asked me like what size are you looking for and obviously I'm gonna go based off bra size so I told them I was looking for like a D to a double D and then from there you actually measure the implants in cc's so based on kind of like the idea of the size that you want in your frame they kind of give you like okay we're gonna go off of these cc's so when I was trying mine on and I told them I want a D to a double D, I tried everything from like 450 to 550. So that was the range of what that was going to kind of be the estimate of. Now, obviously they cannot guarantee that that many CCs is going to be that exact size, but it kind of gives you an idea of it. So everything goes based off of CCs. Now, after that, at my consultation, something very, very cool that my doctor does is 3D scanning. So they will actually get to take like 3D pictures of yourself and then they use the software to be able to put Put the implants that you're looking for on so for example i was debating between two different sizes 
So they actually got to send me both of those of what they would look like on my body and you get like a full 360 kind of thing. You can see up, down, I don't even know what dimension that is, but you get to see side to side to up to down exactly what those implants would look. Now obviously you have to use a little bit of your imagination. I mean it's not completely perfect but it gives you a much better idea of what it's going to look like versus you just throwing implants into a sports bra and then it kind of looks nothing like what you kind of think it's supposed to look like. So this was something very very cool that I really appreciated that my doctor's office did. And then after that they went over like more information with you. They went over like cost of different kinds of implants and stuff and really kind of made some decisions with you and also talked to you about payment plans and other stuff if you were looking to move forward. Forward. and at that point I actually was able to set my surgery date I knew this was the place I wanted to go to I knew this was the doctor I wanted so at this point I actually set my surgery date for pretty close out so by the time of my first consultation to my actual appointment was within less than two months and that was a personal decision I don't think a lot of people usually do that I think from your first consultation until your surgery date a lot of people wait like six months to a year before they actually go through with it but to me I was like this is what I want I've been waiting let's do it so that was kind of where I was at so the next consultation which was my pre-surgery consultation that I just did yesterday I basically went in there got to try on all the sizes again make sure it's the size that I wanted so at my first consultation I went completely by myself I just went into the whole thing by myself and then at this consultation I really asked my husband to come with me to verify my choices so I wanted to make sure that it was 100% my choices my style my fit and then this time around I just had him like kind of give me a second opinion on if I made great choices which he completely agreed with me so that was pretty cool but you get to try on all the sizes again you get to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want to get then you do your before pictures so you'll have your before pictures and then obviously after you have surgery you'll have some after photos so you get to do your before photos and then they kind of go over what to expect on your surgery day they give you some paperwork they give you your medications so yesterday I went and picked up all my medications I think I have like eight different medications ranging from like nausea medication to painkillers to like antibiotic kind of stuff and they kind of tell you like what you're gonna expect on surgery day what you're gonna be going through which of course they tell you like we're gonna contact you prior to remind you to take this stuff and they kind of keep in touch with you through the process which is another thing that I think was really cool with my doctor is that the fact that they really follow up with you and continue to follow up with you after surgery as well so basically in this consultation is just really getting you ready for surgery more of the details of that going into it I will save for the next video but that's kind of the gist of it okay so the next thing is the type of implant so there are quite a few implants that you can kind of choose from so they do have implants like saline versus silicone versus silicone gummy bear so basically saline to me was a lot more stiff it felt quite a bit more fake like not as squishy and soft but the thing with saline that if it does rupture it'll just completely like dissolve and it's like salt water so your body can absorb it versus the silicone gummy bear is when they break they split so essentially just think of a gummy bear when you split a gummy bear in half and it kind of stays intact. Silicone has a much softer, more gel-like, it feels more natural. Silicone is definitely more expensive than saline. I know my mom has saline, but I personally chose to do silicone. So the implants that I am choosing are going to be silicone. They are going to be gummy bear. Now gummy bear come in two different shapes. They come in round and they come in teardrop. I know a lot of people want to go the natural route. So when they go talk to their surgeons, they want natural looking boobs. That word didn't ever leave my mouth. It's just not the aesthetic that I like or that I want. I like the fake boob look. So that's kind of the direction I'm going. So instead of doing teardrop, which looks more natural, I am doing the round. So the round actually holds a lot more shape at the top of the implant versus the teardrop, which are more full at the bottom and then kind of go up like a natural boob would do. So I am doing the silicone gummy bear in round. Now from there, there are actually two different kinds that you can do, which is the HSC and the HSC plus. Now they are actually very similar, but the HSC plus holds a little bit more volume at the top versus just the HSC. So I am choosing the HSC plus. So they will hold a little bit more volume up at the top and I am doing high profiles. So that's basically the implant I'm doing. It is going to be silicone gummy bear round. HSC plus and high profile. Now the HSC plus does add on to the cost. The silicone gummy bear are some of the more expensive ones, but to me it was totally worth it. And the lifespan of these implants are supposed to last about 20 years versus the 10 they kind of say for normal implants. So mine actually are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but the lifespan is supposed to be double what a normal implant would be. 
Okay, woo! Now, moving on. So the next thing that we are going to be covering is the size that I am choosing. Once again, we did do a 3D scan, so I got to choose between my sizes. So when I first started out, I told them I want a D to a double D. So the first size that I tried on was 450 cc's. Now when I tried on 450 cc's, it was big, yes but I was still comfortable, I still felt good in it. So then from there, we went ahead and said, let's try even bigger. So we moved up to 550 cc's. So this was an extra 100 cc's, and there was such a difference to me in the weight of the actual boob between 450 and 550. And when I tried on 550, at that point I was like, Yay. remember, I'm petite, so that was some, that was some boobies. Like those were some big boobs. And I was like, I think, this is just a little too far for me. I think it's just a little bit big for what I'm looking for. I think it's just, this This one scares me. I don't think that's the route I wanna go. So we went ahead and moved down and she said, okay, let's do an in-between size. So I tried on 500 cc's. Now mind you, between 450 cc's and 500 cc's, obviously that's 50 cc's. Now the difference between the two is literally like this little bitty cutlet you add. It's two tablespoons difference. Okay, so there's really not a huge difference between the two sizes two tablespoons, that's it. So when I tried on 500, I liked 500. I mean, it looked a lot like 450 because there's only just a little bit of a difference. And so I was really kind of stuck between these two sizes. So then she basically explained to me that if you're really stuck between two sizes, a lot of times you should size up. You should go right to where you're kind of scared, but you're kind of happy. That's kind of the size that you would want to do because a lot of women actually like how the boobs look when they're like, first done and they're sitting really high and they're swollen. So then over time when the swelling decreases and the boobs actually drop, they wish they would have gone bigger. So she said, if you're trying to choose between two sizes and there's only like a two tablespoons difference, you should really go for the bigger size. And that's kind of where I was thinking as well as I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna go spend all this money, I want it to be exactly what I'm looking for. So I did decide, okay, I think 500 cc's is kind of where I want to sit. And I had showed her pictures of like boobs that I really liked on women of the same frame as me and kind of the size and the shape and all of that. So then she took those over to the surgeon who was actually in surgery at this point and kind of said like, this is the size, this is what we're looking for. These are the pictures that she kind of likes. These are her pictures from the 3D scan. So he got to see all of it and said, yes, this is perfect. This is exactly what I think and totally agreed with me. So that was really cool because even though like he had surgery that day and he wasn't gonna be able to be at my consultation, he was still able to go over everything that we talked about and discuss it and completely agreed with me. So that was an awesome feeling. So ultimately I decided on 500 cc's and then at my pre-surgery consultation, I showed my husband, we did 450 and we did 500 and he agreed with me 500 was the way to go. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so next is gonna be the cost. So for me, the type of implant that I did is actually one of the more expensive implants. Um, doing silicone is more expensive than saline. Doing gummy bear is more expensive. Doing HSC Plus is more expensive. So all together, my implants ended up costing me around $7,100. Now they do offer financing, so if this is something that you're wanting and you're a little bit concerned with the cost, I would definitely look into something like that. Do not put yourself into debt over plastic surgery, but that is an option for you as well. And I do feel like I have to say this, Yes, there are places that will allow you to save some money, but please, 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 please do your research. This is an investment into yourself and your body, and it's gonna cost you more in the long run if you pay less money and they mess it up, and then you have to go do it again, than if you would've just put a little bit more money up front and got exactly what you wanted. Do not choose your surgeon just because you are getting the lowest cost you can find. Please do your research. Please look at their before and after pictures. Please make sure that you have a great consultation and that you're going to be getting exactly what you want. That is much more important than spending a couple extra thousands of dollars to get the look and the body that you've been desiring versus having to go and pay to redo it. Okay, so the next thing is gonna be the recovery time as a flight attendant. So I've kind of covered this briefly, so I'm gonna breeze a little bit through it, but basically I took a VLOA for the month off. They did clear me to fly after two weeks, but when I talked to a couple different flight attendants that I knew got their boobs done, they said that really wasn't enough time because you do have to consider, you're not supposed to be lifting over 10 pounds for I think like six weeks. And those beverage carts are like 100 something pounds. You have to lift your suitcase and put it into the overhead bin. Sometimes like if you're the galley person, 
person, you're gonna be working with the soda trays and things like that. So there's a lot of weight on the planes that you do not wanna just be up and throwing around. So I decided to give myself at least three weeks to recover, even though they did clear me for two. Okay, and lastly is what to expect when moving forward. So obviously in about two weeks, I'm gonna be getting ready for surgery. So I am gonna be doing another vlog, kind of taking you through like the days before surgery, actual surgery, and then post-surgery. And then obviously I'm gonna follow up and kind of explain how recovery is going and what the results are looking like and all that good stuff. So you can expect to get at least one to two more videos going through the whole entire boob job experience and taking you with me through my journey. And obviously in the next video, you'll be seeing some new boobs. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining me. I hope y'all found this information super helpful and I cannot wait to see y'all in the next video. Bye. <laughs>